So the reporting restrictions of the case in Leeds have now been lifted. This is the case that I was sent to prison for reporting on. I'll just point out they haven't been lifted because they were automatically going to be lifted. These reporting restrictions would have been on for another possibly 12 to 18 months. They've been lifted because the media finally, and the only reason why is because I'm in court on Tuesday and they want to be able to report it. The media challenged the reporting restriction on the case. And I've seen some journalists already, already coming out saying this is the one that we couldn't report on. No, there's no logical reason why you couldn't report on what happened to those young girls. There is a logical reason why you couldn't report on the verdict because that could prejudice the next, the next group who were facing trial. I didn't report on the verdicts. I knew the verdicts. Stating the, the case, that, there's, that does not cause any prejudice. Now, what I want people, this is the breaking news from this case. The breaking news from this case, that was on Friday afternoon when Judge Marson automatically sent me to prison. He allowed the 10 men who have all now been found guilty who are all now serving, I think, 220 years, he allowed those 10 men to go home. He had heard a full trial of evidence from 15 children that said the horrific and torturous crimes these men committed against them. Judge Marson let those men go home. One of those men, Sajid Hussain, packed his suitcase and is currently in Pakistan, sentenced to 17 years in his absence. So, we've all seen it. The judge, after hearing evidence against these 10 men, after seeing that there was not one witness, not one statement, but 15 children gave statements, the judge made the decision that these men posed no risk to the British public and were not a flight risk. Well, one of them's gone. One of them has escaped justice. My point on each one of these cases is why are these men, with all their links to criminality, to drugs, to weapons, to prostitution, to trial trafficking, their life of crime, why are they allowed to be walking the streets for a year, walking in and out of court with big smiles on their faces, awaiting trial? Why are the victims still left fearful of these men whilst they roam the streets. And what now this proves, my, my Canterbury court case, where I was given a, a suspended sentence, was because five Muslim men left their DNA after gang raping a child. They, 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 all of their DNA was found at the scene. Why were they on bail for a year? Why were they still running the same chicken shop, still having close contact with children? That was my point. And my issue with it, as a father and as a member of the British public, they are a danger to young girls. Get them off the street. The judge made the decision not to. But he quickly locked up Paul Golden and Jada Franson, yeah? He let them, one of those men from the Canterbury case, guess what? He went and fucked off to Afghanistan, okay? Now this case again, this one here, Judge Marson, the case that I was locked up for, the, the, the case where I was immediately put in prison with no bail, no, no time to go home to my family, no time to prepare anything. Well, one of the men, Sajid Hussain, packed his suitcase. And I've known this for weeks, but I haven't been able to say it because I've got the transcripts from the court trial. And the police say Sajid Hussain was last seen, seen leaving his house with two big suitcases. He's been convicted of 17 years in prison and he has escaped justice. But turn the, turn the table. I, they acted like I was the danger. Everyone acted like it. The press, the media, the establishment, the, the, the judge. I was the problem. I was the danger that I needed taken off the street. Meanwhile, all these men have been convicted. They have all been convicted of raping 11-year-old children upwards, 15 young girls. That's 15 that come forward. They have, been, they have been convicted, and now the media are saying, see, this is why, all acting like they've done a great job, this is why we didn't report it. Now, you didn't even challenge the restriction. You've only challenged the restriction now, and I bet my life that there will be no future case that has such a blanket reporting restriction, in that way. Because I hope that the media will challenge it, or people will challenge it. 
Because why were the public for the last year not allowed to be told the ins and outs and the crimes of this case? Why couldn't it be publicised? Why not? Why not? If you don't give the verdicts, which I never done, which is what they're all saying now, the only thing they weren't allowed to give was the verdict. Okay, so why couldn't anyone talk about it? Why couldn't you even open your mouth without breaking a law? That's not freedom. That's not freedom of the press. That's not a free society. My, my concern lays with preventing these crimes. To prevent these crimes, every young child and their mum and their dads and their, their sisters, everyone must understand the complexities of these trials. They must understand the common links between every single one of these trials. They must understand the signs that their children are being targeted by these gangs. They must. And it would help if they were publicised to the whole entire world as much as possible. Not being hidden. Not all you're going to get day now, you'll get one day's news. That's what you're getting. You're getting one day's news, bang, all the newspapers will think, well, we've done our job, we've reported it. No, you could have reported throughout that trial, if you challenged the reporting restriction, you could have reported the horrific crimes, the racial motives, the religious motives that will come up in all of these trials, the comments they make to these children. All of the telltale signs, how they meet the children, how they groom the children, the signs they play, the way they torture them, the way they manipulate, manipulate them, the way they separate them from their families. There's, it's, a, it's a process that happens in every single one of them. And there are telltale signs that, you're, you, that you can recognise if this was happening to your daughter at the start of it. When they're all being nice for the first six months, they're being nice and they're buying them new TN trainers and they're buying them presents and new mobile phones. All of these signs. But anyway... The reporting restriction has been lifted. And the only reason it's been lifted is because I'm in court on Tuesday. That's it. Nothing else has changed. That's it. It's not like we can't say, well, again, I can't say because there are still certain things people can't say. But that's it. It's been lifted because they want to try me on Tuesday and send me to prison. It's been lifted. Because then they want to be able to report everything about that. But they only challenged it today. Ask yourself why the journalists only challenged this reporting restriction today. Why didn't they, why haven't they challenged it before now? And I see all the journalists jumping up like, oh look at fucking, we done our job. No you didn't. No you didn't. And no you haven't. And you're still trying to bend the facts. And again, out of those 20 men, out of the 20 men convicted, just, just as fits in with the, the actual facts of all of these grooming trials, 90% were Muslim men. Okay? And again, 20 or 30% were called Mohammed. I'm pretty sure. Go through the list of names yourself. I think there's two non-Muslims in the group of 20. Okay? This is, which is the facts. The facts. One that, this is one of the facts. I'm actually being prosecuted by a judge by on Tuesday for stating out that fact. Unfortunate fact, but it's a bloody fact. So, that, it winds me up because I think one of these men has gone. Why was he on bail? The British public... The press, why are you not... Have you seen any of the press? They've all started running their stories. Have you seen any headlines about how one of these men has escaped justice? How one of these men who sentenced to 17 years in prison, on the day, on the day that I got remanded from that court, he was allowed to walk out of court, go home, pack his suitcase, after Judge Marson had heard six weeks of evidence from 15 victims, not one. It's not like if there was one girl, she could be lying. 15! 15! Evidence, evidence from 15 women. And he was allowed to pack his suitcase and go home. And go, and go back to Pakistan. Well done, Judge Marston. Well done. And that's my point entirely. My point on all of this has been the protection of the British public and the protection of young girls. As I said, I said outside court, one of those men who's just been sentenced to 228 years was still in contact with young English girls. Well, young girls anyway. He was still in contact in a business, he was still working in a business that had direct contact with school children. That's my point. So, anyway, I'm going to stop ranting because I'm going to be having a weekend away with my kids, but I've just seen it all breaking on the news. And I thought, why are none of them, why are none of them making a massive deal out of the fact that one of these men, they shouldn't have bail. Why are they on bail walking the streets? I didn't get bail. We've all seen it. I didn't get given bail. How many other people don't get given bail? There's so many people who don't get given bail. These men are, have been raping children, Okay. Not a bit of crime, not selling a bit of gear or something, not, not doing anything like that. Raping kids and torturing them. And you give them bail and you continue to give them bail. 
And that's my point. If you, if you hadn't given them bail in both cases, there'd be no need to people to be warned in the public outside your courthouses because they'd be in prison, wouldn't they? Where they'd belong. And anyway, the press will be jumping over each other to report probably when I'm convicted on Tuesday. But again, you'll read my statement that I'll read out in court that day.